Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome back to Monroe Live. And we're here at the uh, Biltmore um, in uh, Coral Gables in Florida. It's quite the spot. You can see in back of me here, there's this great big uh, gigantic fireplace that probably never was ever used as a fireplace because it's so nice and warm here. That's right. I'm with uh, Barra Cola. And um, today, Barra is gonna tell us a little bit about the most the exciting, the most exciting part of my trip here. And Bara, I'd like you to explain your, your, new, uh, your new process, the, uh, the, the carb ice, because quite frankly, um, I was gonna give my speech today and I didn't know how I was gonna attack one of the major problems, which was the batteries to the coolant juice. And you have the solution, so yeah. Bara, first off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and, and your company, and then we'll dive in, but that's where I want to go as soon as possible. Sounds good, Sandy. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, happy to be here with you. Um, Bar Cola, my company, Carbice, was spun out of Georgia Tech, where I used to be a professor, and prior to that, I was a student that was funded as a, a fellow at Intel in chip packaging. So, um, been working in the thermal management space for a long time. Uh, also been working in nanotechnology. I kind of tell people that I, I may be the longest continuous researcher in carbon nanotubes. I started working in them in 1999, so wow. 26 years at this point. And so what we do is that we actually crack the nut for how do you scale aligned carbon nanotube production. And why that's important for the problem you were interested in yeah. is that these nanotubes, because they are super strong, like 10 times stronger than steel, yeah. super lightweight, super conductive, yeah. If you can crack that nut of aligning them and you can optimize how they collectively mechanically deform, yeah. which is what we did, you can make 100% contact interfaces. And that's one of the biggest issues with any cooling solution is that yep. you can have the best cooling, but if it loses contact, then it's not effective. It's a waste. It's yeah, a waste. It's a total waste. So that's what we are. I mean, we, we started slowly because this is, you know, we built this from scratch and um, we slowly over the past decade through SBIR grants and then slowly through some venture funding, started first selling this, this magical contact pad for satellites. So people used to glue electronic boxes. They've replaced that with using a reworkable 100% contact carbide pad. And mm. six years in space, um, 30 plus satellites. And then we met Dow and we partnered with them because one of the things we do with these nanotubes is that the final step which makes them work like a liquid, even though they're solid, is we conformally coat the nanotubes with a polymer. We don't fill it like a matrix, because that would take away the nanotube mechanics from the right, terminal yeah, yeah. interface. But we put a wetting coat on, and we use a dial polymer for that. And when you have that combination, you can make the best thermal interface in the world. You make a thermal interface that will wet your surface like a liquid, but will be shape stable and have temperature stability and no matter how warped or big your chip is, it can ride with that and not, not only not fail, because I, I want to give us credit for this, it actually gets better with time. And the reason it gets better is because that coating, when it is on the nanotube, uh, which is making kind of a cylinder plane contact, the more the interface moves, the more capillary forces suck the nanotube into the surface. So the more you actually stress it, it actually gets better over time. We've, we've seen as much in um, power modules for U UPS systems, the performance has gotten 30% better in the uh, stress test, you know, the baking yeah, and the yeah, cycling. Yeah. So it's a unique thing because everything else gets worse. Hmm. Well, you were talking a lot about data centers and uh, I told you that I, I, uh, I toured a data center. Um, they had had a couple of fires and whatnot. Um, and uh, they asked if I could help them out. Well, uh, I couldn't. Uh, I know what I know, and I know what I don't know, and I walked away. But your stuff, oh, by the way, when you went through the old-fashioned data centers, yeah. um, your feet tingled because everything is vibrating. Um, you're looking at, in the olden days, uh, chips that really got hot, yeah. and the, uh, the draw, the amount of electricity that's going into these um, chips and circuit boards and whatnot is so phenomenal, so uh, phenomenally high that uh, that the whole building resonates like a, yeah. like a, 
well, like a quartz watch. That's yes, absolutely. How it works. Yeah, absolutely. So. No, I mean, I mean you, your, 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 your point is right on. And so there's three areas we affect the data center because everything gets hot, number one. You know, 40% of the, of the electricity draws for cooling. So you have, the, you have the actual compute nodes, right, where the cold plate or the heat sink is attached. Um, one of the reasons that these data centers burn up, it's not because the engineers didn't design a good heat sink and solution. It's because what they designed didn't last. And there's two reasons for that. One, when you scale things up to large nodes, it's hard to be consistent with how you attach the heat sink. So we help with that. This carbide pad improves manufacturing bond line consistency, so you don't have variability. And that's because, you know, we're making the carbon nanotubes. Uh, so you start with aluminum foil. You're not cutting down to make a pad. You're taking carbon gas and you're growing up. Yeah. So the quality of thickness control is, is 10 times better than any pad that's ever existed. It's like plus or minus a micron. And so, so you get real, really good uniformity. So your cooling stays in contact. And so you end up stopping unexpected thermal throttling, things like that. So that's one part. The other part is that, and to your point about why they might've called you for fires, fires happen because of bus bars. Correct. All that electricity and vibration. And it's a simple thing. They start to make the bolts come loose. When the bolts yeah. come loose, then they, the electrical. Yeah, exactly. So the same, the same thing that like there's a such a powerful thing in making uh, interface material that is mechanically elastic because you can put it on the chip, you can put it on the bus bar, you can put it in different places, and it solves yeah. this mechanical problem. So the reason that I got a call was because I used to work in um, in um, a wel welding equipment, and the welding equipment that I, I was in was mostly resistant welding lines. And, um, and you use bus bars for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, both uh, AC, which can kill you, and DC, which you can sit on and have lunch. But at the end of the day, that's why they brought me, because I said that I had that kind of experience. When I came down there, I was all set to talk to them about bolts and clamps. And that's kind of like what I did. Yeah. I, I used to have spring clamps and bolts, and even, even when the bus bars were like, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, eight, 10 uh, centimeters high or yeah. thick, they, they'd hold together. But when I saw what they had and what I felt in my shoes when walking around, I said, uh, you got the wrong guy. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah. what you got here, but uh, it's not me that can help you out. So, but you figured it out and, and that's, I mean, I, I, I was so excited after your presentation. I don't know if you know, but I interrupted the whole session. No, you didn't. I were ran very right up and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and said, hey, I need to talk to you. So, no, I appreciated that. Yeah. I mean, you, you're someone who saw value. And I think that that's, yeah. you know, connecting. I'm getting itchy already. Here. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? It used to be, I, that'll tell you I'm old. Yeah. It used to be that hot women used to make me itchy. Now it's you. Holy yeah, crap. Now, now it's thermal interface Dude, I'm starting to feel weird. <laughs> Anyways, no, I'm telling no, you, this no, is brilliant. It's, 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 uh, I, I mean, we're excited too, Sandy. I think that we, Dow, our partners are excited because, you know, let me give you an example of like, you can take this material because the nanotubes are so compliant, like a Tempur-Pedic mattress and strong. You can put 30,000 pounds of pressure on it and it still is elastic. You can put yeah. five pounds of pressure on it and it still performs. Yeah. That's a range of performance that allows you to design predictable systems. That's the key thing, because one of the things you need to design predictable systems is you can't have the solutions be sensitive. That's one of the problems with using certain pads or liquids or even washers. And, and so in a lot of it, it really comes back to, like I tell people all the time, I, like, I, I didn't invent carbon nanotubes and there's 100,000 applications of it and there's a lot of good literature on it. I think the key for all of this is economics. It's like, how do you make right. it so that you can scale it? You were asking me afterwards, like, you know, maybe we can use this in your, your application as long as it's cheap yeah. or yeah. free, but yeah. you know, it's affordable. And I think that's the key thing that attracted Dow to our partnership was that they actually asked me, say, hey, you know, we're gonna put this in cars. Can you make 10 billion square inches a year? Yeah. And we say, oh, come visit us, come look at what we yeah. have. Yeah. So um, let me elaborate yeah. uh, so that people aren't confused or don't. So um, I came up with a, um, um, a sketch and then later on a prototype. And basically I was using Dow's um, 
uh, pultruded, um, flame retardant, uh, polyurethane materials. And I made a battery box out of it. And um, everything's wonderful. Um, but uh, the place where the coolant goes, um, I didn't have an answer. And what I was gonna do was exactly what you said, tin foil. When you gave your presentation, yeah. two presentations before mine, I about peed my pants. You had the answer to what, you, you had the, 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 the enabler for everything else to work that I, that I thought would be a good idea. I saw your slides and, beforehand. Oh, you did no, not, I, you lions. <laughs> you know, up until now. <laughs> but no, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm telling yeah. you flat out, this was brilliant and, um, and we'll put uh, a sketch of that thing in. Yeah. But, but and, and we need to get a picture or something. You have to send us something so we can see what it is that sure, you're sure. doing here yeah. with them, carbon nano. And, but at the end of the day, this is an enabler that goes across the board. And we're working with the Navy right now on battery packs and stuff like that for future ships. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the way that I can take, uh, you know, um, hundreds of mega, mega uh, kilowatt hours and, and turn it into something that won't catch on fire ever. Between the, the Dow material, which, I mean, 20 cycles at, uh, at 1200 degrees uh, C, and um, and 15 minutes of crack, nobody's impressive. got that. Yeah, Nobody. Yeah. And but the, the enabler, what do I do to keep the the batteries cool? Even though I can take the heat, or even I can take yeah. the fire, I can't cool this damn thing down if I don't have something that's going to give me a, 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 a I don't know a catalyst or whatever between the water that I've got and the batteries that need cool. Yeah, yeah. So at this, at the end of the day, your thing was just, I mean, I was so, like I say, I jumped up on the, you, you did. I did. I appreciate it. Yeah, so. Well, I mean, a nuance about what you, so, cause your, your solution is a composite. And one yeah. of the, the issues sometimes is surface roughness for traditional oh, thermal that's, connectivity. That's, yeah. We actually showed with this material, the carbide pad that we did a study and ranged surface roughness from a few microns to you know several tens of microns it's surface roughness and uh, uh, invariant um, because right. basically mm -hmm. the um the nanotubes surface because of the way it deforms so there's some key science one it doesn't have a poisson's ratio which just means that Why? when you compress it in one direction it doesn't expand in the other direction that's important. The other well, you thing. Just, you, that's a brand new. Uh, every time I turn around, you got another yeah, thing. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot so of layers, like onion. Your, <laughs> your, your stuff defies physics. What, it's, it's, what's Poisson going to do? He's going to have to. You're going to have to wait tables or we're, something. We're, you put him out of business. You know, <laughs> yeah. he, he can go drive Uber. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> but no, it doesn't have a Poisson, which means that that it, it allows stress reduction, but confirmation around local asperities of very high ratios yeah. without getting in the way of the other contact. And so like basically it just means that you save money because if you make a composite or a 3D printed surface or whatever, you don't have to spend money polishing it because you, yeah. you, you don't want to do that. And so you can have a thermal contact. And, that, and that's what I was telling everyone today in the talk is that the real innovation is having a simple, affordable technology that allows you to make 100% contact. Well, I'll tell you what, um, like I say, I get excited once every, I don't know, 150 years, and, um, and you just blew me away with your stuff. I mean... I didn't realize you were that old. You look good. Ah, uh, 77, <laughs> but, uh, but don't tell anybody. Right. But at, at the end of the day, I'm really, really excited about your technology, and I'm even more excited that you just got off the plane from Japan, <laughs> and you're still up and running around. I'm hoping you're not taking some kind of drug, but I'm telling you what, I... I just a little caffeine doc, and doctor, sugar. Doctor Coder, right? It's <laughs> yes, like, yes, yes. Well, doctor. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you, and I mean I, that sincerely. I appreciate it. it really, I'm really, really excited. It's really excited. Pl pleasure to meet you. I, I really have enjoyed interacting with you today. So. Well, this was a big day for me. Um, so anyways, boys and girls, um, if you're non-technical, this probably meant absolutely nothing. If you are technical, <laughs> we're going um, to put up all the information you need to contact... Um, Carbice, and, uh, and I highly recommend that if you have some kind of a problem with wicking away heat, 
this is uh, this sounds uh, like, like magic, but I'm telling you what, it's I'm I'm really impressed. Thank you. That's, Thank it's, you. It's it's you know for your audience, if you uh, Sirius XM satellites, the U.S. Uh, SDA constellation, uh, Army drones. So it's something that's already out there in a lot of applications. Well, we want light applications but big big yeah <laughs> i want giant okay thank, right, you thank, so you. Thank, thank you so much thank you this is brilliant yeah, thank you and thank you